Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. <clears throat> a warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, it gives me a great pleasure that we are unified as one team, one body, although members that have different functions, we fall under one authority, one body, and uh, that's the, the head of the body is Christ. And we spoke a lot from that perspective in our previous session from 1 Corinthians 11.3. And a warm welcome to this series where we are dealing from the subject of authority, the law of authority, right? And uh, in today's world, if you see this, you will be astonished to know that um, the world gives least of the importance to any of these topics. And the reason is very simple that they don't understand the significance of this authority. Neither have they got any kind of visibility or reasoning skills to go and find out more. You see some people in life, they're always busy, but you ask them, what are you busy about? They just cannot justify. Right? I've seen many people in my life who cannot justify the very reason why they are busy. Yeah, And I've known many people in my life um, who are also into ministries. And if I would be closely absorbing um, their line of ministry, the chain of ministry, um, I really get surprised. Why? Because it has no connection with the word of God and if I were to question them, they get offended. <laughs> you, you also know such people, right? Many of, many of your uh, friends, many of your uh, relatives, they are into... And then their intentions are right. We are not against that. Their intentions are right. But the only problem is they are not doing it in the in the right way. Anyway, so the point is, if you are falling under the authority of God and if you want to do those great things for God, then do it in the way that God expects you to do things or operate things. And that's where Christendom has fallen really backward that they don't understand how important it is to fall under these rules. See, they have, they, they follow the rules everywhere. They, you follow the rules at workplace, you follow your rules at um, in, the, in the midst of the traffic and you have the taxation rules, right? You have to pay taxes, else you're going to be charged, you're going to be fined. Sometimes, you know, the government also can seize your properties if you're, if you're a tax uh, defaulter, something like that. But when it comes to Bible, people really don't tend to give that importance. The reason is because ah, it's Bible, right? No big deal. Correct or not? Right? It's Bible, right? What's a big deal? That's what I hear as a statement from many people. And you'll be really surprised and shocked on that last day of judgment, the white throne judgment, that... God would also make the same statement. Ah, is it you, right? Okay, what's a big deal? Throw him into the lake of fire. <laughs> you feel good about it? <clears throat> I definitely don't feel good about it. Because I don't want to. The first foremost reason is I don't want to burn in the lake of fire. I don't want to go through the torments and tortures. Because my Jesus went through all of these to save me. And get me that <clears throat> eternal life. And therefore, there is no reason that... I should go there and burn. Secondly, I don't want to dishonor my God while I live here that he dishonors me in return. Is this the reason why Jesus was sent to this world? Is this the reason why he suffered? Is this the reason why he went through all the brutal harassments and stuff like that? Yeah. And uh, thirdly, 
I don't want to lose the glory of my God. I want to regain the glory that Adam and Eve lost. And even after the second Adam, Jesus came and gave his precious blood and life to the mankind. We couldn't get that glory back. Yeah, the glory which they lost, the Shekinah glory which they lost. Shekinah glory. And you can see that, you know, when God enters into the Eden Garden as usual, they hid them themselves from the presence of God among the trees. And we heard your voice in the garden and I, and, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Adam makes the statement and God understands, okay, all is gone. All is lost. Of course, God knew it even before Adam would answer because nothing can be hidden from the sight of God because he is omniscient, omnipotent and omnipresent. He is everywhere and anywhere and he is almighty. Okay, on the same lines we would be discussing today and this will be our last session. We are going to wind up um, this series and this will be definitely our last session. I was supposed to close a couple of sessions ago but I thought I will do it a little uh, do a little more explanation from 1 Corinthians 11.3 where we were discussing about relationships and families and how we should work together as, a, as one body in Christ within the family and be a blessing to this world, be a blessing to the church and stuff like that. Therefore, I took a little longer there. Yeah, I, I strongly encourage you to please, you know, read such sessions and may God bless you. So on the same lines, we are going to talk through the um, the position of authority and the power that Satan has over us, which we also fairly discussed already, right? Or in other words, the position of authority and the power by Satan has been abused. And whoever abuses the power given to us from above yeah, they are going to be punished. And that was the very important aspect how Mr. Lucifer became the devil, right? Because God trusts him and gives him that power. Ezekiel 28, the second half I want you to take and read. You will all understand and agree with me that he misused the powers. He induced a lot of violence. And there were a lot of businesses taking place. He, he introduced corruption. And all of these took, the, took its stroll and one fine day, you know, he became an adversary to God. He couldn't um, take it in because he wants to introduce his own rules, his own regulations, and he wants to be liberated from the clutches of God. Have you seen that attitude within the families? Children always doing things in secret, joining hands with mommy. Because why? Papa is very, very strict. He doesn't give us freedom. He doesn't give us authority or he doesn't authorize with certain powers um, to handle certain things independently. Even if he authorizes, he would still need an account. How have you done it? Why have you done, not done this way? But at the end of the day, neither this mama or the children sit together and try to introspect a little bit, taking a little bit of examples and case studies. Why would father... Or why would Papa in that home make such strict rules? Is it for our good or for, or for our bad? And that's called as testing the spirit and abstain from every forms of evil deeds. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 to 23. We all know this. Yeah. And it applies to your personal life. You don't have to trust anyone blindly. And God also says the same. You don't have to trust me blindly. Look at my works and at least have some confidence and trust. Jesus also said that and God also said that. How much I have done for you and even after that you behave like this that you go and worship idols and build, build altars for Baals and you know all the pagan gods and all that. How is that you expect me to be calm and God gets aroused in anger and he even sends serpents in the midst of the wilderness journey that Israel, Israel had. Right? And after that, they possessed the land of Canaan and they got into idolatry. They married Canaanites, Amalekites, Philistines and all that. They went around Jebusites and every foreign uh, land they go. And I see that culture is coming in, in 
by and large bigger longer you know by and large uh, you know uh, uh, larger thresholds within christendom that i see a lot of guys going and marrying white skin and dark skin and all that see there is a cultural difference and you need to understand i'm not trying to separate we are all human beings at the end of the day we all have the same blood and flesh agreed but you cannot step outside your culture your society which god created i'm not trying to create communal rivals here right yes yeah, so it's not about the color of the skin it's about the culture right you marry any color of the skin you want it doesn't matter god doesn't discriminate anyone with by gender or color i i'm not saying that but i'm saying even within the same community even within the same culture you still need to understand whether that person's spirit is for god or is by god or is is with god or is on the god is on god's side check on his lifestyle check on that sister's habitual practices you don't have to appoint a detective but of course you can make your conversations very privately with the person before marriage and then ask god to guide you and the holy spirit is going to reveal a lot of secrets about that person if you have been grounded and rooted in the word of god and or if you are the person who's walking in the spirit galatians 5 if you yourself don't have the spirit filled experience or spirit filled life or being led by the spirit then don't expect anything from the holy spirit because why you're not going to listen it you're going not not going to understand it anyway that's exactly my point right you're not going to understand it anyway why because that's a different language and god is very clear of revealing it only to those who are thirsty those who long those who desire it's not something cheap that you can get it for free yeah these are all some of the precious gifts of god these are all some of the precious you know um, the, the the character of god that you could instill within you the character of god is nothing but galatians 5:22 and 23 it's called as the fruit of the spirit yeah those nine things are like the character of god it's not something cheap that you could just go and desire i hey i need this give it to me not like that god deserves that respect and honor and he expects that those who are thirsty upon whom i shall pour the water the living water water of life all right so i've been talking on these uh, lines for a very long time this will be our last session and i'm trying my best to wind up giving you that assurance that if you exercise the powers under the authority of god if you made that decisive choice with all due diligence with all due respect with all due honor that you have for god almighty i can guarantee that you're going to be prosperous in everything you do not only materialistic prosperity but also spiritual property uh, sorry prosperity and you will be a role model in love faith and purity in conduct and speech 1 Timothy 4:12 and Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 and 3 uh, 1 to 3 you will be also grounded and rooted in the word of god and you will be the children of light yeah and as jesus said in uh, john 14 20 um 27 i think yeah my peace i give it to you not the peace that the world gives the way how you talk versus the way how others talk are going to be significantly different why because that's the difference you make and that's why jesus made a very clear statement and that's why i gave um i made a statement just few minutes ago it's not about the you know the skin color or gender biases or community thing and all that even within the same gender even with not same gender sorry <laughs> even within the same culture even within the same community okay anybody getting an idea of this one sex marriage it's absolutely demonic you fall under the authority of devil without an explanation i'm not going to explain anything further that's against the law of nature that's against the law of god that's against the authority of god you are violating it you are violating it all and the rest i leave it to your imagination up to you yeah so the point is coming back here right as long as you fall into the authority of god you will definitely know the rules and the rules are only for your good only for your benefit and only for your prosperity and can there be a human being in this world psalm says in psalms 37 23 
David makes the statement he wants it to be written and registered in the word of God I was old but I was young but now I'm old I've never seen the righteous begging for bread neither their children being led down by God the man of God who always lived <clears throat> by the word of God his heart never turned to the left or to the right he was always after God looking what god like looking at what god disliked and he is ready to give away and this man of god says i have never seen anything like that happening bad to the people of god and you talk about david he is a classic example for every single thing that exists on earth he is a he was a king and he was a warrior and he was a very good looking man and even in romance he had many wives and beautiful wives and he had wonderful children but some of them yeah one of them absalom became a devil and another guy was an idiot yeah there are also cases like that adonijah right before the king could anoint him he was wicked i would say uh, yeah and uh, he anointed himself thinking he is the next in line i think wrong but you got to do it in the right rightful way right do do it in the most respectful way uh, you he should have gone and claimed his throne to to the king right not before the king was dead that was so rude on him right the king was still alive and he goes and celebrates and saying that i am the next king and anoints himself wicked wicked attitude why because he has not understood the rules of this authority and it hurts people yes and you do something playful like this i don't mean that way i didn't talk that way oh this is what i my intention was like this but then you perceive it like that they throw the blame back on the other person i have seen enough of such people in my life why because they never understand the law of authority yeah authority means i am telling you this is an universal subject not just the authority of god but the authority of the kingdom authority of your family <clears throat> you are the head of your home and everything is bible based bible is very clear it's a universal book and it covers everything and anything and i told you many of the corporates industries human rights even red cross blue cross all of these guys have extracted rules and in fact these organizations evolved why because of bible right they learned all these things from bible and they found looked at looking around the world human rights was missing they formed an organization then they read bible our oh, red cross is missing to empathize and sympathize people helping them as far as the health matters are concerned they looked around the animals are being brutally tortured they formed a blue cross you see cross red cross and blue cross bible teaches everything and bible is universal as long as long as you are grounded and rooted as much as you are having that fair understanding in this subject of authority of god given to you from above for free in the name of jesus and by his grace there is nothing that you could do in your in your life or anything that you decide in your life could go wrong because the holy spirit is going to lead you you will not be stupid the whole world sometimes may be on the other side and you may i've gone through that feeling many times in my life i felt that lonely um uh, state of mind uh, in my spirit and in my heart many many times and i used to ask god god i wonder why alone am i not able to accept why alone am i f- having this feeling is there anything wrong in me was the world right this time and was i wrong and god would talk always in his mellow voice hey you know what this is how this world treated me while i was walking until the garden gethsemane incident why did i look for peter john and james i was feeling lonely i wanted fellowship with men but they never would stand by my side yeah, but that situation was different because anointing was not yet given but now you have your holy spirit how can you say you are alone he is your companion he is your helper don't you trust him don't you have faith in him and plus you have your intercessor as jesus elder brother who sits who seated on the right side of the father in heaven 1 1 john chapter 2 verse 1 and hebrews 1 3 and mark 16 last two verses yes these are the things which always clarifies that you're not alone in this race you're not alone in this world and always god gives you that assurance that he neither slumbers nor sleeps he is always watching 
by you all the time always even if you would say no he is is not going to let you down right you all have that assurance huh? i hope you definitely are on the side of god and therefore you don't get into these kind of confusions and mr devil is an expert in bringing you to this kind of deprived state you will feel almost being dropped by everyone in the world and that includes god yeah first of all it starts with god right god you have forgotten me god you have dropped me god you have ditched me god you have done this and all that so you give up on that then naturally the anger and the frustration and the disappointment turns uh, towards the side of uh, you know uh, that uh, the men and and these are all demonic so and and these feelings are real i am telling you this for sure these feelings are absolutely real and you can be guaranteed that yes some or other day you will have to go through these kind of um uh, what to say uh, not not just the feelings but these kind of situations that you will feel the whole world uh, has ganged up and uh, they are they are they are they are against you yeah and you it will lead you to confusions also and i'm telling you this but but who can give you that clarity who can give you that um, understanding as except god no one can help us no one can help us that's why bible says that you always need to be connected connected in his authority connected with this great god and therefore anything and everything that uh, comes against you or is going to lead you away from god's presence naturally you will get the clarity why because you are in connect with god <clears throat> yeah so for are you with me all of you with me now turn your bible to the book of um, luke and uh, obviously you all know this the gestimani incident only and uh, luke uh, chapter f- uh, 22 and verse 53 when i was with you daily in the temple you did not try to seize me but this is your hover in the powers of darkness that will be the scripture today and obviously i'm going to also refer one more scripture and we will close in style we will close the series in style you are all with me so far hmm okay so jesus made this statement why because there are two different spiritual doctrines or principles that we could learn from the statement when i was with you daily in the temple you did not try to seize me this is the statement he made to the roman soldiers not roman soldiers the temple soldiers the I mean, roman soldiers have not yet come into play right because he is not tried in the pilot court yet he is still being arrested by the temple soldiers and the spiritual meaning is if you are with jesus or if the holy spirit is with you either way you have that relationship your body is nothing but the temple of god i gave you multiple verses always right john 14:23 john 14 16 and 1 corinthians 3 16 all these things are the references which confirms that the trinity father son and holy spirit are always interested to have that fellowship in you or with you and therefore they always prefer and desire to stay within you and that's why uh, you know um you know by uh, what what to say is uh, that's why you uh, you know bible never forces things on you but then he the bible gently tries to educate you and give you that authority to decide under which authority you want to fall by right to which authority you want to submit and exercise the powers you have only two choices not multiple choices either under the authority of god to exercise the powers and the gifts given to you or under the authority of the devil and you get better gifts <laughs> that's why you see too, too many rich people and too many healthy people they are all heathens happy people they are all heathens but while you live your life on earth you'll be always burdened 
not running around like an insane or with grief or sorrow like that. You will be burdened for the mankind that they are perishing. Of course, you will be very joyful inside of you, but outside you will all be very responsible. You will have the duty conscience, conscious and conscience, and you will never feel complacent. At the same time, you will never be a lazy person. But you will see all of these missing in the world and they will call it as entertainment, uh, stress buster, relaxation, holiday, vacation and you will see their, them going to the resort or some other place and doing all nonsense over there and then finally you will see them lying around there spending enough money and what do you gain? Why don't you make your own home a resort? Tell me. I'm not against journeying. I'm, I, I'm also, um, I won't say fanatic in driving. I like long drives. I like taking that time out with my family and going out. But some people, they do it often. Therefore, therefore there is something wrong. Not against it, right? Don't get me wrong. The thing is, <clears throat> if you're with God and God is with you, and if your body is the temple of God, you will not only feel the joy of the Lord, which is which will become your strength, Bible says, any time, any depressions, disappointing moments, any sorts, any sort of things that leads you to um, some sort of frustrations, you will be able to overcome almost instantaneously. In fact, you will be a person who will never have any mood swings in you. But still, yes, we spark up when people do some things that are not appropriate. Yeah, and therefore, you and I. Um, don't don't get surprised, right? Whenever you get into frustration, how can I get frustration? Is Lord with me? No, you will go through it, but you will overcome it. Why? Because God is with you, and you you can feel it. You can you can literally feel that, and you will feel so uh, good about it. Why? Because great reason within you than that is in this world, and you will be happy and thankful to God that thank you, Lord, that I am able to overcome. Not without your help, I I, I could have gone through this or something like that yeah and you always have that joy of the lord in your heart why the reason is the same sentence i am making it very personal right which jesus made it as a statement against the temple soldiers who came to arrest him and of course judas iscariot was a traitor and he betrayed him uh, that's a different story but here i'm talking about I'm just twisting this verse a little bit and making it very personal. When Jesus is with us, when the Holy Spirit is inside of us, when the Trinity is leading us, if Jesus is our intercessor and God neither slumbers or neither sleeps and he protects us and you also want that, you desire it every day, you spend your time in prayer, you always want to stay in connect with God, you never would want to say no to his presence, you would always want to stay by his side. That's what it means, right? When I was with you daily in the temple, the temple refers to the body, your life, your, your body, yeah, what you do with your mind and organs of your body, what you do with your spirit. You, the, your spirit always listens to the admonishing words of God. The Holy Spirit teaches you, reminds you. John 14, 23 says that, right? Sorry, 14, 26 says that, right? He reminds you. And he helps you to overcome. But for that, he, he only reminds and brings, brings the scriptures to your remembrance of what you read, of what you had meditated, of what you had understood, of what you had sought God for explanation. And that tells that you are grounded and rooted in the word of God because you are that person. Psalms chapter 1 verses 1, 2 and 3 talks that day and night you meditate in the word of God. And God is pleased with you. And he lives inside of you. Why? Because you have made your body the sanctuary of God, the temple of God. And the second half of that verse says that you did not try to seize me. You means that you is not you and me. That refers to the powers of darknesses. That refers to the principalities and the powers of darknesses, the wiles of the devil. 1 Peter 5 8 says that he moves from one end of the earth to the other end, across the earth, back and forth and to and fro, whom I could devour today, whom I could deceive today, whom I could destroy today, whom I could destroy today, whom I could murder today. That's why you see so much of violence happening every single day. You turn on the news 
channel or you turn you, you flip on the newspapers all that you will see are full of murders and wicked uh, things happening and people getting arrested drug peddlers being arrested and yeah people get into brawl and they kill each other but you and they would say it was a very silly thing that they kill each other the other day i was just listening to the um, so one of the news channels and i don't do it quite often whenever i get a little two or three minutes i just flip through the channels in my mobile phone um, yeah probably while i was while i would eat my food <laughs> i would use that time to just I, i also want to know what's happening in this world i don't want to be delinked and deassociated from the world that's also wrong yeah two guys were consuming alcohol and this guy asked give me the 50 rupees inr indian rupees this guy says no i cannot give this guy broke the bottle and killed him and he killed him so brutally almost like you know that bottle went into his body all across the body some 60 or 70 times he stabbed him what do you think is this a normal human reaction or is this fight that is worthy for such a brutal killing the guy wakes up the next day morning he lands he he realizes that he is in jail he has been arrested already and he doesn't remember anything that happened last night except that they opened the bottle while they were in conscience but after they drunk they became animals that's why i keep telling you people quit alcoholism yeah please quit being an alcoholic and this situation could happen even within your own family husband and wife sitting together and having drinks huh? yeah you you could kill each other why i pulled up that incident as an example is the devil will try to seize you away from god he will try to separate you from the love of god and he will give you that authority to murder others to kill others to devour others to blaspheme and to be a false accuser to be a blabberer yeah to be a self righteous person self seeking spirit and to be a selfish person he will give you that those kind of powers because you are under the authority of devil and that's a reason bible strongly encourages that always ensure your body is the temple of god how do you ensure watch and pray matthew 26 41 don't walk around with that assumption oh 30 years since when i had been baptized in the in that lake by that pastor and no devil can touch me really if that is your belief i can already guarantee my brother my sister that your body is no more the temple of god why because you have been living in assumption every moment that you spend your life on earth it's like walking on the battlefield it's a spiritual warfare and the devil is readily waiting to attack you like those pack of wolves standing on the other side of the bush the green bush that looks so nice and there are beautiful flowers you go there to pluck the flowers you get very close to the line of sight where the wolves are readily waiting and hiding under the bush and they sprang on you and what happens they going to kill you and wolves they attack as pack of wolves right it's their family business <laughs> they go around and attack people and they they kill people very very cunning yeah and devil is like that and that's why i picked up that example foxes and wolves be very careful with the devil why because you never know it all may look green it may, it may all look beautiful it, uh, it all may look peaceful wonderful that's why i'm giving you that example and jesus makes a statement and i converted the statement as a personal statement as if i will act uh, jesus sitting right in front of me and he is going to make the statement while i was with you daily in your temple that is your body the temple of god the devil did not try to seize you away from me separate you away from my love he did not drag you out of my presence but this is your hover and the powers of darkness is jesus makes a statement to the devil why and and to you why because you made the choice to surrender yourself in the into the hands of the devil because this authority is not agreeing to allow you towards that lust of the world and the 
pleasures of the world and the passions of the world and uh, yeah the sexual desires that your body each time gets into temptation you are aroused in that lustful desire you want to quit but you're not able to why because you made the wrong choice and that's exactly what jesus is trying to say so next time when you get into any of those sinful deeds and for which you need to know what is sin what is not sin and that's why we have done another series pass of sins there are 20 sessions which we spoke from the book of second timothy 3 1 to 9 yeah and we spoke from the list that is given to you from galatians 5 17 to 21 um there are a lot of things passive sins yeah and you will also see there is another list that is coming from the book of luke um to uh, no not book of luke book of mark uh, chapter chapter 10 i think uh, i'm i'm not uh, very sure with this words but it's in the book of mark you will see jesus is also making list of statements and he's telling hey you be watchful on these things and if you're not watchful then you're definitely going to pay the price heavy price and that's exactly what we are also trying to teach each time we get into discussions like these uh, we don't want you to make those wrong choices and when you make those wrong choices you won't even know that you are making those choice the choices are are wrong or right <laughs> for which you need revelation from god for which you need to be uh, you know in connect with god and you don't tend to make that connect with god then you have a problem beloved and that's exactly what i'm trying to say that be very very careful when you make certain decisions especially you know when you get into new relationships for example you know you get a new friend at workplace you get a new friend as a believer in christ at your in your, in your church test the spirit test the spirit for which you need to be strong in your spirit if you are that feeble brother then what happens yeah and therefore uh, these kind of things keeps happening in our lives and therefore you have to be always seeking god for advice and that's why i picked that example of yeah in this world when you move around you will see all of the world majority of the world involved in certain things i could pick a recent example but many of us many of us won't agree therefore i'm not picking it's a controversial subject right related to pandemic and i'm not going to pick that up so anyway let's let, let's leave that aside but let's pick up other examples like you know the alcoholic thing and um and uh, for example you know they in the name of fellowship they always get into this get together weekends always they don't have time to stay at home really is this the way how you celebrate you spend every weekend this is the way how the world spends every weekend mm whether you whether you believe it or not whether you like it or not this is the way how they spend every weekend <laughs> and therefore you know you got to be very very careful of what we are talking here yeah i found the verse mark chapter 7 verses 21 to 23 there are, there is other list of things all these evil things comes from within the man and the pharisees came against jesus saying hey your disciples are not washing their hands jesus got all worked up and he makes the statement hey from the heart of the man proceeds evil thoughts adulteries fornication that's exactly what i'm trying to tell you now murders i gave you an incident theft covetousness right coveting somebody and pulling them on your side to fulfill the lustful desires of your flesh wickedness deceit licentiousness compromises of the holy deeds and evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness yeah mark chapter 7 verses 21 to 23 when all these things are going to happen 
when you have moved away from the authority of god and god doesn't say anything but he tells you what happens as a post consequence that's why i meant meant the statement when jesus was with you daily in your temple the body right i converted it into a very personal statement yes we need to extract principles don't read like stories ah in the garden of gethsemane jesus made the statement why did he make that statement to convey a message to you this is that message you did not try to seize my child who oh, is speaking to the devil now but this is your hover devil hover and the powers of darkness is are overwhelmed in your life because you gave the room my beloved and devil is not to be blamed here neither god you are to be blamed because you made the choice bad choice and colossians 1:13 he has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love yeah therefore give thanks to the father who has qualified us to be the partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light colossians 1:12 13 and 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins and he is the image of the invisible god the first born over all creation when never you look at jesus he's no different from father yeah his father himself came in his image but he is invisible why because i told you the reason is because sin entered into this world and it separated us from the glory of god we lost the glory and we are not going to get back that glory again as long as you are going to live on this earth why because the ruler of the earth would be the devil and god is not going to give this glory until the new city of god descends from heaven new earth new heaven revelation 21 and revelation 20 last couple of verses you will see the city of god and therefore god creates everything up fresh brand new where you will see no sin where you will see a little boy leading the lion and all that you you will see all of that right and the sheep will be playing with the tiger and stuff like that everything will be new sin free world no bloodshed and nothing of that list i gave you mark 7 21 to 23 you don't you don't find any of those no covetousness no licentiousness no this and no theft and no murder and no brawls and no alcoholic nothing but i am also having another second half of the story to be conveyed never ever wait for revelation 21 22 the world you live you can still you know acquire and obtain the glory of god that's the glory in the new covenant through the coming of jesus yeah 1 corinthians um, sorry second corinthians chapter 3 you can read and you will understand you know paul talks about the glory in the new covenant and i have explained that in the body mind spirit and soul series second corinthians 3 verses 7 to 30 uh, sorry 18 you always read that understanding that if you walk by the, those doctrines then what happens wherever you go you bring the glory of god to the people whom you interact everyone that talks to you and never ever expect see one mistake i keep making in my life until this day since you are living for god you are grounded and rooted in the word of god and you have understood the doctrines of god therefore you go and talk to any person they are going to be convinced not necessarily 9 out of 10 people they don't get convinced they will be nodding their head out of respect that they have for you but they go by their decisions and that's okay i definitely give them the space i'm not going to go and judge them or you know hurl blows at them and may god curse you and i hand you over Uh, into the hands of the devil and every <laughs> don't talk like paul right sometimes we get all worked up not necessarily brother give them the space it's okay you told what is to be told and you you just gave them the uh, idea of making the right choice and you also spoke about the authority of god and the rules are, are involved in that and what you get in earth the life that you live on earth and what you get after this life on earth i when when you reach heaven therefore you all should be having that kind of attitude that there is nothing that could separate you from the love of god that gets the foremost importance and when you are involved in that foremost importance you will never 
be deceived or you will never be separated so always have this intention that you got to stand by the side of god and what can make you stand by the side of god are the decisions that you make in your life but the decisions you make in your life without being grounded and rooted in the word of god is not going to take you anywhere that's exactly my point and with that i would like to close this wonderful series thanking god for his mercies and grace that we had definitely done a very good study thorough study of what are the rules and regulations within this authority what's the difference between the authority of heaven versus the authority of the bottomless pit authority of god versus the authority of the demons and we have a fair understanding what are all the powers that are given to us the spiritual gifts and the spiritual fruit given to us if you are making the choice to submit under the authority of god versus the gifts and the powers that you will definitely get if you are under the authority of the devil but they are not for they are for real of course you will have that power you will get good friends and you will have too many people to gel around you will have a uh, you will make a great impact in the society and you will become a public speaker you will be a rich man you will be a very healthy person you will be a very happy person but you are not a joyful person hmm. at some point of time you will hit the iceberg and you will look around the same friends same society all will be gone whether you like it or not that's a parable of prodigal son and then you are going to rush again to god but why through hard ways okay that's one aspect in the last aspect with that we will close you will not be able to make into the make your way into the kingdom of heaven why because if god were to sit right in front of you in the white throne judgment and require an account of all your deeds and idle words and the time how you wasted on earth and the talents and the skills how you misused and abused it and gave it gladly and into the in the hands of the devil why because you made the choice to fall under the authority of devil Matthew 12:36 Ecclesiastes 3:15 and Revelation 20 verse 11 onwards the white throne judgment incident ha ah, you will downcast your eyes you will be in such a downtrodden state of mind and god is going to definitely order who is there throw him into the lake of fire Matthew 25 you take and read you will understand the parable of um, the sheep and goats and the parable of the prodigal son and you know so many parables jesus speaks and he tells the people he wants them this is this is going to be the end result if you have made a choice to fall away from the authority of god there is nothing that can save you yeah all right my beloved be very careful i would say please there is no harm you have to listen to these sessions twice or thrice because these are the revelations and from god and God talks to us in a very personal way and these are only going to help you to get closer to God. May God bless us. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful what for these wonderful sessions and this very good series Lord through which we are able to learn from the subject of authority. We started from Mark uh, chapter 1 verses 21 to 22 that you enter into a synagogue and you start to teach and with what authority you are teaching people were astonished but initially we kicked off the session to speak on the unclean spirits but we couldn't wind it up we are going to talk through that also help us god but help my brother sisters who have gone through the entire series and they have uh, made every effort to listen may they be blessed god in jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist and stay tuned um i will meet you soon with another series and there are a lot of uh, teachings that are pipeline we have a busy schedule ahead so subscribe you will get that automatic notification as and when we release the videos and share it with your friends new ones dear ones your relatives may all of them be blessed and without a doubt we will all meet in the paradise and then in the kingdom of heaven spending our time eternally with god may god bless us love you meet you soon take care